Welcome to yet another video on RxJS operators. In this video, we'll have a look at the plug operator, an operator which makes it easy for us to, well, plug the properties or property of objects which are emitted as values of our observable. Sounds abstract, let's have a look at an example. As always, a link to this code can be found in the video description and this is the code I'm starting with input field and then my observable wrapping this input event so that on every keystroke if I type something there we lock the current value of the overall form of the overall input I should say. Now this is nice and this is done by extracting it with event target value and of course you could argue that having to dig into that event target value property in the subscribe method is not optimal. Why is it not optimal? Because if you chain more and more operators to this, well, pipe of operators, then you might hit the point where you want to extract a value right at the start and then the other operators should be built on that so that you don't have to extract the value in every operator. Let me show you an example. Let's say I want to set up this debounce time distinct until chain operators I showed in this video here. So after creating the observable or before subscribing, I should say, I will first add debounce time 500 milliseconds. This will, as I explained in the linked video, which you can find in the video description too, this will simply cause the observable to not emit in value if we have more than one value per 500 milliseconds. So only if we have a time span of 500 milliseconds without a new event, the last one will be sent to the subscribe function. And this is often combined with distinct until changed to ensure that you don't emit values which are basically the same as the last value so that especially for listening to input events for example you don't fire you don't send values if the user input didn't actually change now with that in place if i clear that and i type something here you'll see nothing happens until i stop typing and then it's emitted and if i then type again and reword you see it's emitted again now we would have expected for this to not happen because this thing until changed should make sure that we don't emit a new value if it actually is the same value as before. And you could say it's hello here, even though I typed a little bit, but once I finished, it was hello as before, and yet a new event was emitted. And the reason for this, of course, is that the event object is a different one than the event object we had before. Just the value of our input field changed. And of course, our XJS doesn't care about this by default. Now here we could solve this by adding map in front of it and extracting this. So we could add map here to simply get our event and return event target value. And if we now hit enter, clear the console, and I then also of course remove that because here we get the finished value and no longer the event. Now, if I set it up like this, again, as shown in the video I linked earlier, if I now type hello, what we'll see is hello. And if I then change something, come back to hello, it won't emit a new value because now the value we're passing through our observable chain is just hello. Now, this video is about pluck and not about this map debounce time distinct until changed thing because we have a video about this, right? Well, pluck simply makes this step here a bit easier. We can exchange map for pluck and pluck now is a special case. You may only use it if you're working with objects. It allows you to pluck a property or properties out of that object. So in this case here, the object is the event object and pluck then works like this. You simply pass a list of strings where each string is a property of the object, the property you want to pluck out. So we could pluck the target. This would, behind the scenes, give us back, well, just the target of that event. And that, in this case, would still be an object because the target is our HTML input field. We're interested in the value of that, and therefore we can simply add a second argument, and you can add as many arguments as needed to extract the final property you're interested in. So in my case here, I'm interested in the value of the target, so I pass the value as a second argument. And of course, these names, these strings here, have to be properties which exist on the objects. 
What this will do is basically the same as map that before, but of course with a more concise, shorter syntax. And that is especially what you should use it for. If you want to extract a property from an object, think about using plug instead of map, it's shorter. If I now clear the console and hit control enter, you will see that if I enter hello there, we print hello. And if I change something and come back to hello, it's not printed again. If I change it though, we do see that new value. So same behavior as before, but with plug instead of map. Hope you like this. See you in the other videos. Bye.